are Casey Nash and Brittany Weiss, and we are here to talk to you about our ADHD research project titled ADHD, Overdiagnosed and Undertested. This project came about through a series of myself, I've taught kindergarten and now fifth grade, and I've had student after student come through with an ADHD diagnosis. And in those children, the diagnosis looked so different for each child, and the accommodations were so different that we really wanted to know what was the reliability of this testing process. If students came to us with such different symptoms and such different accommodations, how are we supposed to teach that? And I currently have a student in my classroom in the first grade who's been diagnosed with ADHD, and I have completed several different types of surveys that were inconsistent with each other, and I was interested in finding out the root of this diagnosis and the better ways that I can help them in the classroom. Our research question, we sought to determine, is the testing process for ADHD reliable? If you were to look at a lot of the disorders and learning disabilities that you see in a classroom from a day-to-day -day basis, you find that most of them have a very uniform, very specific, detailed testing process that involves most of the time a physician. Um, and according to our research, ADHD is one of the only uh, disorders that can not only overlap, but it's tested by so many different opinions, and it's a very subjective process. The details are left up to very different people from very different educational backgrounds. They see these children at, a very, different at very different times, and we wanted to make sure that this was fair to not only the children, but the doctors and the adults that will be dealing with these children on a daily basis. In our literature review, we wanted to find, is ADHD over-medicated? Uh, we found that it was misdiagnosed due to a lack of testing and condition overlap, as previously mentioned. The diagnosis process is different in boys versus girls. Uh, and we found that ADHD is different um, based on the different places that you live in America. Now, in doing this research for the literature review, this uh, made it to where we wanted to know even more about ADHD and the testing process and is it reliable or is it not. For example, with the diagnosis between boys and girls, ADHD um, seems to present 100% different in girls than it does boys, and it seems as if girls are underdiagnosed um, a lot more than boys are because of the way that they present their symptoms. Additionally, with the different cultures, we found that in the South where we live here in Tennessee, that the conditions for ADHD completely double compared to other areas in the world, and that has a lot to do with the over-medication. In the South, we are more likely to seek a medication or a, diag a prescription, whereas up north and other places in the country lead to behavioral therapies. When looking to find out more about the diagnosis of ADHD, we visited um, three different doctor's offices in East Tennessee. We visited the school counselors within our schools and general education and special education teachers. We gave out a survey from SurveyMonkey uh, that surveyed 56 teachers in a K through eight school. And we collected um, testing resources from the doctor's offices that we visited. All right. What we did is we put these tests uh, on SurveyMonkey and we asked people to use a Likert scale to rank different parts, how much they knew about ADHD, what was going on, uh, when they saw it in their classrooms, uh, if they noticed a difference in genders of the way that they were diagnosed, and we'll get into that more, but we found that a lot of the teachers that we surveyed had the same questions that were left unanswered. When visiting the doctor's offices, they provided us with their testing scale that they gave to parents, to teachers, and to themselves to rate a child for ADHD. Uh, we noticed that different doctor's offices used different scales to rate the children, which uh, where we saw was an inconsistency. And then when visiting the school counselors, we asked them questions about ADHD in their school, the percentages, what do they do with children uh, in their school with ADHD to better accommodate them with their learning. 
the respondents that we had, uh, as previously mentioned, uh, were 56 teachers that were in an East Tennessee school, um, in a K-8 school, and then we also visited uh, and surveyed two school counselors and then two doctors um, in East Tennessee. Now, as we went through the research, like I said before, a lot of the teachers had the same opinions and thoughts that we had, and a lot of them, when I asked open-ended questions, really were able to elaborate on some of the fears and the inconsistencies they had seen in their teaching careers. Um, as I went through the data, I always like to go back and see patterns that may be in existence. And the one thing that I found is the teachers that answered the question is, the ADHD testing process overdiagnosed, most of the teachers in pre-K to two either agreed or strongly agreed. And when asked to elaborate on why they picked what they did, they said, well, it's a little too soon to tell. And sometimes, according to our research, kids are getting diagnosed as early as two years old. Um, ADHD is one of those things that when you see it, a lot of times it just looks like a kid being a kid. There's no real way to tell if a child that's four or five is just hyper, or if they're really starting to ex demonstrate some of those symptoms of ADHD. Um, this was the part that was very alarming. I wanted to know, of all these teachers, there were several that had said, yes, I've been, I've been asked to fill out an evaluation. Well, the next question was, how familiar, how familiar are you with the ADHD testing process? The problem with that is there were only some that were extremely familiar. We had eight people of 56 that were extremely familiar. We have 26, the majority of our research, that are only somewhat familiar. It is impossible to give a correct, precise diagnosis without having concrete, specific knowledge about what you're testing. And I am part of the somewhat familiar because whenever I was giving the survey for the child that's in my classroom. I was giving no guidance um, with this survey. I was not told um, what effect this survey would have on that child. You're sent a, in an email and you're asked to complete the questions and send them back. You're not given any feedback. You're not given any instruction. And so you just have to read the directions and do the best that you can, which leads us to believe that this is not an accurate diagnosis for the child. When visiting the doctor's offices, um, there were two different forms that we saw that they got to choose to give out. When speaking to one of the doctors, they said that they get to choose the testing source that they feel like is most reliable. Uh, the one that I would, if I had to choose one, would have to be the Vanderbilt. Um, there are 48 different questions on the Vanderbilt questionnaire for a teacher, and there's an also an in-depth survey for the parent and also for the doctor for the behaviors that they see as well. Um, and it gives you, you have the choice of never, occasionally, often, or very often. And these questions go pretty in-depth. And so if I had to choose a survey, this would be the survey that I would choose. And then the next one was the Connors questionnaire. And as you can see, it only goes to 28 questions. And it's hard to give a child a diagnosis if you're only asking 28 questions about them. And then that leads us to where we've seen the ADHD can be an umbrella for underlying um, diagnosis or disorders instead of ADHD as a whole. Uh, when we went through the research, uh, we never found a definitive answer. There have been studies from as current as last year to as far back as 2000 that it's constantly a seesaw. We don't know what, what their actual thoughts are. What we did find as we researched is a lot of times, even if a child finds a physician that is able to test them and test them thoroughly, like with something like the Vanderbilt system, um, a lot of times health insurance companies do not cover the full out testing, which means that it only gets halfway done. And again, it is impossible to put a stamp of a diagnosis on a child without the full ability to test them. Uh, the other thing we found was it wasn't that teachers don't, don't trust the testing process. Um, most of them like having something to use. They like having a scale like Vanderbilt or Connors. But the problem is that it's not uniform. Um, for example, if you look at different health conditions, 
whether it be cancer or anything, there's a very specific medical test that takes place. And we are dealing with a child's learning and their ability to succeed in a classroom. And what is scary is the fact that so much research leads itself to the fact that we are putting them in a position to set them up for failure. So hope that I did find after talking to one of the doctors, whenever he visited a conference at Vanderbilt, was that they were doing some brain mapping and they were trying to find some different um, alerts in the brain to show if a, a child or a person has ADHD or not. And so this gives me hope to believe that the future in medicine will be looking for a more definitive answer to where they can diagnose just like cancer or they can take a blood test um, and use that brain mapping to know that for sure a child has ADHD or it does not and what parts of the brain it affects. Um, our recommendations for this, because we weren't able to get one answer, uh, that's the thing with ADHD testing, there are so many different opinions, so many wonderful opinions with so many different ideas that would really do well to be further researched with people that had the extended amount of time. Uh, but what was determined is that we need to find a consistent, reliable testing source. And we think people need to spend more time if they were to revisit this question. As time has gone on, we have more developed technology, we have more medical knowledge as years go on, and we feel as though we are only on the upskirts of this. We have the chance to really find the answer for these children and how to correctly diagnose them so they can be successful in a classroom. Thank you for your time. It recorded the whole time, didn't it? Mm -hmm.